what's going on you guys my name is nelson and welcome back to the q box for another episode uh today guys i have another guest well and i say another guest but he's a guest that's been on the show with me before uh brian d covington welcome man how are you today man what's up everybody i'm doing well how about yourself Ah, oh, dude, man, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, I know it's been a little while since we've uh, been on the air. A lot's been going on. A lot of different changes have been taking place. So, you know, it's it's cool to kind of kick you know things back off uh, with my man Brian D. Covington. So, uh, yeah, how's everything going, man? You know, I, I see that you have a lot of things going on, brother. How's what's what's the deal? Ah, oh, man, I've I've got like a uh, a lot of different avenues I'm working on in order to get you know writing as far as uh the book but creation in general um out there because i i've come to find on tiktok um I, in fact i think i wasn't on tiktok when we first did our um uh podcast but uh i jumped in there and found that there's a ton of creators struggling just to get seen uh, and yeah i figured i could use my platform to start boosting other creators because I mean, why not, right? Yeah. Um. So anytime I find somebody whose work I'm like wowed by, I'll go buy their work, um, do a quick listen, see how I feel about it, and if I dig it, I'll take a whole episode. You know, it's like a minute, three minutes, however TikTok goes, and um, and let the world know about them. And <laughs> the cool thing is, they turn around and reciprocate, which I think is tight. I really mean, cool. that's that's organic growth. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely but this is man. how we grow as creators man we have to back each other and um we are that force so let's work to get each other out there and cut the bs because sure that's what's gonna hold us back you know so this has been working out great and um i plan on getting on um youtube because ah. there's certain avenues yeah man there's other avenues to uh, creation that I think could draw people into the story. So if I could get there, boost musicians, boost vocalists, boost um, uh, narrators, mm -hmm. that would not only give them a platform and a way to um, display their skills, but it also pushes the story of the book, right? So. I kind of give it out like, you know, here, here's a sample. Check it out. If you dig it, cool. If you don't, but still check out this guy because he has other projects. And if you dig his voice, you're going to dig his work. You know? Man, yeah, that's, a, that's amazing, man. Um, speaking of all that, man, I will, and we'll get further into details. We go along uh, in today's episode. But uh, speaking of that, as you just kind of uh, brought something to my attention, you know, there's so many ways to monetize the art form and in, in, in 2021, a lot of new changes have been happening for creators like yourself as an author, as an artist, as a, you know, you do a lot of things, you wear multiple hats. And, uh, and for me as well, who also wears multiple hats and, and just says, you know, just really appreciates the, the, the process of creation, you know, um, you know, you heard of this thing about like N, uh, NFTs now, you know, all, the, all these little things you can do and, and, and just kind of boosting your income or people can invest in you as a stock, like you're a stock, you know, considered a stock or something like this. Have you heard about this? I have, man. And I am curious, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'll come to find that when you delve into that, um, either you get it right off or you don't. And if you don't, yeah. it might be worth uh, pushing forward and talking to other people who might get it, who can explain it to you and means that you can understand. But uh, me personally, as much as I would love to jump into that right now, yeah, I feel like I'm, I've got so many irons in the fire that, um, and knowing myself, if I spread myself too thin, nothing starts getting done. And that's problematic. Um, my mentor, um, Jason Primrose, um, he jumped into NFTs. And he, the cool thing about it is he already had a vast amount of amazing artwork created mm. for his book. So it was easy to transition from here to there. Right. And he knew the right people to speak to, or he found the right people to speak to. And um, once the dust settles on my end, mm -hmm. I'll probably start talking to him about that. Well, but how does it now, work? Do you, do you know how it works roughly? Or I, I'm well, not really sure. Basically, um, NFT means non fungible um, tokens, I think it's called. OK. And basically, you take an image and make it somewhat of a blockchain. 
and there's X amount of that image, right? So you can take that image and make it more rare by adding things like animated um, elements to it, um, different frames around it, that kind of cool stuff. And all that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way you purchase those, uh, depending on platform, I guess, is like with Ethereum, which is, you know, cryptocurrency. Oh, really? With crypto? Yeah. Shit. But it's, uh, the question is, I guess, I have about it is, as the artist, if I were to create a piece, mm -hmm. make it an NFT, put it out there, and like, hey, yeah, I want two Ethereum or 0.5 Ethereum or some crumb of Ethereum for it, and somebody buys it, yay. But does that mean that I can't make prints? Or does that right. mean that I can't, you know, like, uh, send the digital image? Like, if I just send it as a PDF to somebody, I can't do that now? I mean, I need what, to what do you, know. What do you mean? Like, like, in other words, do you have to give, like, a percentage of that to the person that's owner, or part owner of your work? Is that what you're referring to? See, see yeah, that's, that's the question. And mm. does the fact that I could still send a PDF or PFT, a PDF to or JPEG to somebody else. Sure. Does that mean that this now now no longer carries that value? Mm, I mean, okay. there's there's a lot that I don't get because I'm like, if I could just hit copy and send, why does this person have to pay this much for an NFT? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think uh, I, I did a little bit of homework on it, but I, I think there's, I mean, the uh, I know a guy that, that that did it, man, and for his music and bro, he made like over over a million dollars, man. Um, like he just flipped this, he just did his thing, and um, and I actually made his his platform much more, uh, gave him more value, gave it more or more reach uh, to different people. Because if they know, if somebody knows that they can make money in your art without yeah. doing anything, there's gonna be a lot of buy-ins, especially if the art is is really of high quality. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, I think there might be some pros and cons to it, but I definitely see where you're coming from in terms of uh, concerns and what, what possibly could go wrong there if, of course, if you don't do your homework or really know what, you're, what it is you're getting yourself into. Um, so, yeah, definitely, man. Um, so, and just going into that whole world, you know, you mentioned cryptocurrency and Ethereum and stuff. Have you <laughs> invested and got into this world at all? Because you sounded like, yeah. Uh, so, dude, I, I found out about Bitcoin when it was five dollars a pop right Shit, man. and at the time i was fresh out of college um we were trying to figure out what we were going to do how we were going to yeah. get into this animation thing how we were going to yeah. make it work make the dream work and so imagine like mm -hmm. uh, a handful of like college students struggling to just make ends meet and some guys like hey man um have you heard about bitcoin like what's yeah. that oh it's virtual money i'm like mm -hmm. dude i can't eat with that <laughs> you know, right. I mean, we have much more immediate issues, <laughs> but, um, dude bought like, I think he was like 50 bucks for it. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm just going to sit on them. And then eventually these things were $60,000 a piece. Yeah, I heard. Old Luther decided he went, he, he sold off a bunch, bought a house, bought a car, all this stuff. And I'm like, I should have bought Bitcoin. And I could have skipped a meal, but see, that's, that's the privilege of hindsight. Right? Yes. So I'm like, okay, later, a friend of mine hit me up. He's like, yo, have you done this Bitcoin thing? I'm like, dude, I ain't got no money for that. I'm trying to sell a house. He's right. like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but at that time, they were 11000 And I'm like, you think yeah, I got 11000 just in my couch or something, man? This is not how it goes. Yeah, but, I got shit to do today, brother. <laughs> but if I had bought one for 11000 yeah. I would have been fifty thousand dollars rich, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's like I'm like this every day. Ah, so it burns, man. But then, of course, and I don't know if you've been watching it lately, but then there's this huge drop. And oh, I dropped over to like thirty thousand now. It's like it went down to, I think it went down to was it high twenties? It probably just went down to thirty. Shit, but let me was, let me see. Let me see. It keep, was yeah, keep talking. Low. Uh -huh. And now it's back up to like forty something, mm -hmm. but. Can you imagine somebody who bought like a sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin and they're like, "All right, I'm good," and then it starts doing that? <laughs> that's some that's some BS, dude. Now the thing is, um, when yeah, it was sorry, sorry like, to cut you off. It says currently yeah. Bitcoin is at thirty nine seven right now. Okay, 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to bounce back up eventually. Um, but the thing is, um, all the stuff is risk based. Yeah, you know, and you know you're going to be fine when the banks start jumping in, and and that's what happened. The banks were like, "Oh, we're going to get this Bitcoin. Oh, we're going to get Ethereum." So it's safe to buy in, but now it's more expensive. Yeah, you know, so it's like, all right, um, it's honestly it's legalized gambling. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's the, I mean, honestly, in this case, you know, <clears throat> not diving too much into this world, but like. I mean, it's gotten to a point where even the government, U.S. government jumped on, you know, and they created their own coin, uh, crypto mm-hmm. coin, you know. Um, and they, from what I last heard, that, you know, the whole point of uh, crypto is, is to have a decentralized uh, platform where you're not being taxed for this, you know. Um, and so I think that's, that's, that equates to freedom in a sense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had this conversation off the air uh, regarding, you know, the whole tax situation, how it works and, mm-hmm. you know, how it does has, it has its benefits, but really, what is that really going to, but we're not here to talk about politics or anything crazy like that. It's just, you know, it just, for me, it just makes the mind wander, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> that was, that was such a thing back in the day. A lot of people say it was great. A lot of, some people say it wasn't. And yeah. in most cases, it's the people who have a lot that say it wasn't. Right. But uh, it was the gold standard. True. It was like gold was worth a lot here, it's worth a lot anywhere yeah. else. And everybody kind of coveted gold. So gold had a baseline right. that was as much wherever you went. Right. Um, Bitcoin is very similar to that. And yeah. bringing about the gold standard in digital form is problematic when you have mm-hmm. uh, things like fluctuating uh, dollar values, you know? Right. And that's where the whole control issue comes in. And I, and I feel like uh, the closer we get to the, uh, the reality of uh, Star Trek's um, no money, <laughs> no yeah. currency situation, the harder governments around the world are going to fight for it. Because that would mean leveling a playing field where the powerful 1% are going to have to forfeit all that power. Yeah, you know? yeah, they're gonna have to so, be okay with this thing called equal uh, equalism, and they yeah. don't they don't want that because if everyone's equal, who can you be better than? Yeah, I mean that's that's the ego, right? That's how that's how that's working, and you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, I got into crypto uh, recently, and I say within this past year, uh, mm-hmm. and I also put you on to something too, um, uh, the Pi Network that's up and coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even on. It's not even on the live net yet, man. And uh, everybody that does not know uh, Pi Coin Network, I need to jump on it, man. It's it's really has a lot of potential, and we even hearing rumors and 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 things that you know like Apple might even be behind it, but they haven't publicly made it known yet. But it could be something really really big. So I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to make the same Bitcoin mistake and and kind of be asked out in that situation. So you know. Just jump on it, man. It's a, it's something that you can, you know, you, you have nothing to lose at this point. Um, and you don't even have to buy into it yet. You could just mine uh, on your phone. And, um, you know, all you geeks out there like me <laughs> and Brian, I think we're, we're, you have your inner geek sometimes too, right? <laughs> we don't have... I, I try not to let my geek flag fly too high. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a stealth geek, but I am definitely geek. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for me, me too, man. It's, uh, it's definitely there. Um, Especially when I get into topics that are really technical and, and uh, yeah, I lose people sometimes. They're like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know uh, what, though? I, I do have to say, if Apple is behind it, I think it would be genius because, I mean, come yeah. on, a- Apple pie. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And think about it like this, right? Um, crypto is going to be a different thing, man. That might really take over a lot of things. And um, hopefully it won't get to a point to where it's being taxed. Um, but it's, we don't know. It's like a 50, 50, they're going to try, you're going to try, but you can't, you can't control something you you can't, uh, you don't have access to, you can't trace. And, um, there's, and the way it's being done is kind of, is like legitimate. You're like creating your own world of of currency Mm -hmm. and trading off of that alone. That's pretty badass. You know, um, another thing too, I just jumped on, I I recently bought like, uh, it's not a lie. I just wanted to just kind of just get my feet in there. I just, I, I bought over, um, with the, I think last month I did this, uh, no, two months ago, excuse me. I bought like 300 Deutschcoin. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so now I'm just sitting there and I'm not even looking at it. I'm just going to let it chill. Um, <laughs> it was, 
Go ahead. They have a they have a term. Uh, God, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a it's an acronym for hold on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> so you just kind of buy it and you just sit there and hold it. You yeah, know? you just sit there exactly. Yeah, you you know, man, because at this point you have nothing to lose. But like, uh, yeah, man. Um, just to kind of conclude that point, like it's it's something you never know, man. Uh, if you can get in, if it's possible, do it. You never know what you're gonna get out of it. And um, yeah, man. Um, so that's just my my thoughts. But uh, yeah, I would always say though, don't don't ever put in more than you can afford to lose. Absolutely. That's where you see people like, oh, I put my life savings in because I know this is gonna be great. And then you know, Bitcoin yeah, I don't drops do like you know thirty thousand dollars. So I'm like, just um. Yeah, put in a little bit at a time, build up if that's what you got to do. But yeah. make sure you're grounded in reality. Yeah, absolutely. This is what's absolutely. going to affect you most urgently, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. No, I'm with you, man. Um, that's why, yeah, that's, I'm the same way. I, I don't I don't like taking risks. I, I like taking calculated moves, you know? And, and uh, you know, um, but of course, you know, you really can't control certain outcomes. Certain things just happen. Um, yeah. And you're just like, damn, okay, I got to figure that out, but... You know, um, but it is what it is, man. But anyway, I want to get back to you, bro. Uh, it's it's been it's been a minute since we've been on the first one, man. And um, you know, for those watching for the first time, uh, please tell us about you know between magic and dreams. This is your, oh. this is your first book, and just kind of give people a brief synopsis what it's about and um, and and what's going on with it, man. I I heard, I heard you got some some great sales so far, and and you're doing well, and you know, yeah. and most importantly, you're doing it independently, so. That that's a that's a in a nutshell that's that's a lot you know to take on on your by yourself and and I think that's something you know people need that are our upcoming authors or creators you know should be advised about and and just kind of educated on and how to do it properly you know the right way. Yeah, so I guess um let me do my a little intro here. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing this, yeah. Anyway. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Brian D. Covington, author of. Between magic and dreams. There it is. Wow. Nice, man. That's awesome. So, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Between Magic and Dreams is a story about a college guy who's uh, fighting to preserve our reality during the rebirth of forgotten times through a phenomenon no less than new light. Um, his name is Quinn Pfeiffer, and this takes place in Atlanta. And Oddly enough, or and I should say sadly enough for our protagonist, it doesn't stay in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> um, but two shows um, an expansion of uh, the things that you were going to witness in the first book. And um, like any good story uh, on character building, it gets worse before it gets better. <laughs> yeah. So um, this whole process of writing this book has been a really... Uh, amazing journey. There's a lot of things about um, doing the book independently that um, you wouldn't really consider from the get-go. In fact, now, given that we have the internet, given that we have platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. so on and so forth, you don't need a publisher. Now, True. it makes things easier, but you pay for that ease, you know, and you get restricted by that ease. You get put on horrific deadlines for that ease because ultimately, even though you're doing work through a publisher, you now work for that publisher. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, we need this book out by this time. We don't care what you got going on. You need to get this book out. Contract, contract, you know, whereas if you're doing it on your own time, right? You could explore other things. What you write is up to you. You know, they can't, no one's there to tell you, hey, you can't put this in your book. Or hey, yeah. you, you need to change this ending because it's too this or too. No, it's all you. You control the narrative. That being the case, the stories that aren't being told, the way that you feel they should be told, you can do that. Now, downside, you have to also handle all the overhead. Mm. <laughs> So yep. if it comes to um, saving up to do something, <clears throat> save up to do it. If it takes crowdfunding, do that, you know? But ultimately, if there's other people who will believe in your vision, and regardless of what that vision is, there's going to be people out there who believe in it because 
about the six billion people on the planet. You right. can get a handful to help, you know, invest mm -hmm. in your in your project. Um, in the end, the fact that you have control over what's being done is the the real highlight of independent publishing. Um, also, the fact that you get the bulk of the money when it comes back your way. So, yeah. you know, I mean, eventually it comes down to the cost of production. And as long as you're not dumping a ridiculous amount of money into marketing, which isn't, again, necessary because you have these platforms, but it's going to take time. You nice. have to reach out to these people, find out where your niche audience is, focus on them, you know, and the word gets around, you know, and show appreciation for the people yes. that back you, you know, because one of the main reasons that they will follow you is not only because they like your work, mm -hmm. but because mm -hmm. they like you. Right. So be that person, you know, reach out to them and be like, you know what, call them by name. Hey, so-and-so, thanks for getting the book. I really appreciate it. You know, um, there's going to be more to come, so stay tuned. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something worth doing. Is it easy? No. But neither is going to work every day to a job you hate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I heard I heard something the other day. Uh, you know what, man? You know it's 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 hard. It's it's hard being you know poor, and it's also hard being successful. So you just gotta you just gotta go and get it. You know, and and yeah, regardless, uh, you end up losing do, doing it uh, the poor way, like you know struggling and and not having any success. So it might also take take a different route and struggle like you would struggle being poor and struggle yeah. and being successful and then reaping the benefits of that success uh, in your own in your own way uh, you see fit. And so you know I, I you know I, I like speaking with you, Brian, because uh, I, you're one of those people that are very honest, very transparent, and um, you know you really you really take things in life as they come and and. Uh, and you can see that how that reflects in your work, you know, because um, you really take your time to uh, articulate your feelings, your thoughts, and 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 you know how to turn those thoughts into things. And I think that's really commendable um, from 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 what I'm seeing from my from my bird's eye view. And so yeah, appreciate it. Just keep rocking that, man. I think that's such a great thing to do. And I mean, we've even gotten to a point now where you're you're. We mentioned it in the last one that. Um, uh, you have book number two coming soon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the what's the situation with that? <laughs> Tell me about that right now. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny how it goes because as excited as I am about just getting it out there, mm -hmm. um, I was setting it up to be like maybe seventy, eighty thousand words, which is just a couple, uh, about maybe twenty thousand more than uh, the original book. But as the story goes, you'll find that the characters kind of write the story for you yeah so it went from 70,000 to 80,000 80,000 to 90,000 90,000 wow. to 100,000 I'm like huh crazy all right so this is going to be a chunky one it's it's <laughs> it's a decent sized book and I wanted to have the same pacing as the first right. one so it's it's done um I'm in the process of doing rewrites before I send okay. it to the editors who can, uh, you know, make sure that I'm not rambling through the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but man, I've got the artwork done. Um, nice. I've been in collaborations with some people about doing this. Uh, so I got this plan. I wanted to do um, an in-between uh, miniseries, like a three-issue comic series for uh, a bridge between the second and third book. Mm -hmm. And it's to emphasize um, the journeys that each of us are on, mm -hmm. right? That um, that pertain to the actual main story. Okay. So the characters in the comic are side characters in the book, mm -hmm. but their role in the main story is important. But you okay. don't know what somebody goes through in their life before they come into yours. So they bring all that baggage or all that strength into your story for however long they're there. This, this reminds me of the, one of my favorite freaking movies of all time. Uh, remember that movie, Never Ending Story? Yes. That, yes. That, I don't know why it just brings me into that world, man. Like, it, I love that. Those two parallel like, realities, mm -hmm. you know, 
where one one reality affects the other somehow they become sort of parallel mm-hmm. um but they have an influence on each other if one something goes left on this world something goes uh left on the other world and, and you know and so forth but i don't know i just sorry to interrupt but it made me think of that no it good in fact um speaking of which my favorite character out of that whole um movie is one that was only on the screen for maybe a couple of minutes and uh do you remember the gamak yeah 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 i remember that that thing thing gave me nightmares and it was only on the screen for a couple (laughs) of minutes and to hear him to see like yeah i'm i'm here to help the nothing i want this thing i'm like yeah this guy's crazy and he's scary (laughs) yeah yeah but was that the was that the bird uh, human being? Was that the one you talking? It's, it's okay, the I, I think wolf I lost at it. the very end. Like oh, this yeah. wolf that everything was already going to pieces, and he's like huddled down in this little cave. You know. I remember and, now. Um, yes. Yeah. That, I'll pop it up on the screen here, guys, so you can see it real quick. Oh no, you gonna? <laughs> yeah. Well, not now. Uh, I'll show. Oh, okay. I'll show it to them. Yeah, at some but point. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, um, the fact, the thing that made him so scary to me, not, not was i mean it wasn't the point that he was like you know capable of eating our hero it's the fact that there was chaos happening everything was going and he's like yeah yeah i want this this is great you know yeah and, and there's people like that there's people who would throw gas on a burning building because they're like yeah you know this is this is good this works for me yeah and it's that um i guess uh unbridled attachment to chaos yeah. that I find uh, unnerving. And yeah. the fact that he could eat you. So. <laughs> yeah, that never feels good. <laughs> I, mean, I, I do imagine, though, that it has to be a great feeling, you know, to to completely be free of that fear of nothing. Yeah. You know? And that's exactly what he personified, like a complete and total lack of fear towards the terror that just did nothing. Would you consider turning this 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 first book into an anime like film like Disney kind of energy because it kind of throws me into that world, man. Like I can really see myself like enjoying that very much, you know. Especially 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 a, a, a character of color. I, I think that'd be cool, you know. See a nice little brown skin be on a Disney screen, and and it's a it's it's a character of color, and I and I think you know for me color, you know, I don't. I'm not one to, to, to say anything about, you know, race or color. Like for me, color is, there is no color when I'm seeing mm-hmm. an art, you know, I see, mm-hmm. I see, I see the, I see the soul, which doesn't have a color. It doesn't, it, it's universal in its purest form. And that's what I'm looking at when I see something like this, but it's so cool at the same time to see uh, people of color coming out in Disney films and, and and uh just having these sort of uh like like black panther for example that was pretty that was mm-hmm. badass that was yeah. one of the super cool film um i still watch it to this day once in a while but like it's it's you know may may uh damn man the main character i, I still can't believe he passed man uh, you know of cancer um, yeah yeah chadwick boseman yeah, yeah yeah i can't that believe was, it that was a solid blow man in fact there was another movie that came out after he passed actually there was two they came yeah. out after he passed, and I, and I can't bring myself to watch them right now. I gotta, that still kind of burns. Yeah. But, um, but great, it's great you brought up Black Panther because um, the thing about having independent work and going to a company like Disney or Netflix or whatever is that they will want to control the narrative. So you will right. have to stick to your guns and be willing to say, nah, I'm gonna pass, mm-hmm. you know? Because they're going to want to make changes. And yes. you're either going to take that because you see dollar signs, or you're going to stick to your guns and be like, look, um, people love this story. So yes. if you're going to be true to the source material, we could do this. But if yeah. you got to shit on it, we're going to have to keep it moving. I don't sure. care how many dollar signs you throw. Because look, my fans are loyal, man. They're loyal. They love the work. And I cater to my fans, period. Um, nice. If Disney was to come at me with a, a big chunk of money, look, I'm not starving, all right? Sure. We're not broke, you know, and um, I'm not making millions from this book, no. But if I was offered millions <laughs> only to just completely crap on everything that my fans like about it, 
Your foundation. No. Yeah. No, because this isn't just, this is not just the story um, that's supposed to connect and touch people. It is that, but it's not only that. This is also a legacy. Sure. Right? My children are going to benefit from this for the next 98 years. You yes. Know, as long as we have sole ownership of this, it's us. You know, this is a Covington production, and I love that. And I'm going to protect it, not only for my um, my family, but for my fans. That's so, powerful. It's, I, look, and I've had to walk away from big chunks of money before, um, sticking to my guns. And, of course, after the fact, I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> but, mm, yeah. but later, it's like, you know, um, there's a certain power that comes to um, having pride in your work to the point to where you're not willing to sell out for the moment, you know, giving up mm -hmm. what you could have right now, or forfeiting greatness in the future for yes. a little bit of something now. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people I, I, forfeit their dreams because of what they can get now. That's that's powerful. Yeah, I see it all the time. Um, you know, and this is this is why like even now if if I jump into my world for a minute musically, that's why I'm really uh you know, I'm getting, at this point, I'm getting so many offers, you know, um, but I know what it's like to take that roller coaster ride and, and um, take that risk and take that chance and see it go left um, and me have to sit on a shelf for 10 years and that's mm. time I'll never get back. Um, but at the same time, this is not to say that I'll never do it again. Um, mm. It's not to say that I will not take that risk again, yeah. but it definitely... It has to be on my terms going back to, you know, uh, back to what you're saying. It definitely has to be on my terms and, and it has to be mm -hmm. a Nelson production, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and, um, and that's something that, uh, people need to know, like, don't, don't become desperate because, um, you know, there's, there's an opportunity, uh, that seems nice. That seems like a dream of a lifetime. Um, you know, don't become desperate. Really, at this point, this is all those years of discipline, disciplining yourself to be focused and, and, to, and to not, you know, and to stay focused on the long, the bigger picture and what you're supposed to do in this world for people. Um, at that point, that's when that, all that practice, that preparation needs to kick in in that moment when you're being presented an opportunity like that and really have to make a sound decision. Hey, is this something I should do or not? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, don't sell your diamonds for cookies, folks. <laughs> nope, not worth it. Not worth it. Again, not 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 you know, taking a crap on the idea of of success, and and not going for it. No, if the, if the, if the here's the deal. If it's not, if the terms and conditions are not what you want them to be, then it's not something you should be doing. Especially, you know, it's not a deal for you when 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 it's told to you in the beginning, nothing's negotiable. Everything's fucking negotiable. Forgive my French, guys. Um, you know, everything is negotiable. German. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forgive my German, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, don't, listen, it is what it is. Um, that's when you know it's not for you. And, and when, you, when you know that, that that person that or that business, that firm that you're going to do business with, you know, you'll see right in that moment whether or not they have your best interest at heart. And this is something you always have to keep in your mind. But you have to stay strong in that moment. You got to fucking suck it in and, and really focus on seeing through that and saying, okay, this looks fucking amazing right here. Oh, my God. I'm going to win right now. You know? Sometimes you can't see it. Sometimes that opportunity comes later. But you really have to, at that point, use uh, really dig deep in that intuition and and really know your stuff at this point. You had to have done your homework before you step into a room at that level uh, of the playing field because any any pro level uh, negotiator is going to see that weakness. And so um, that's that, and that's the beauty about working independently and um, and and going through those rounds because you have so much practice by yourself. Who's legit? Who's not? You know. And, and you really have a, a strong grasp on legitimacy, you know what I mean? And, and, mm -hmm. and what's bullshit. And so, um, so yeah, man, I, I, from, from my experience doing music, I've seen it all the time. And um, uh, that's why I'm always trying to push people. That's why I love independent artists. I love independent writers. Anything that has the word independent attached to it, um, mm -hmm. I know what they're going through. They're in the trenches, you know? 
they 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 grind and they're recording records. They're writing songs for other people. They're producing songs for other people and themselves at the same time. They're writing books, coming up with all the money in the in the in the front and the forefront, you know, to to invest in their product because um, mm-hmm. they know nothing, you know, comes for free. And um, and they're investing in themselves. And you see the grind, man. You see the grind. And you know when you talk with them how real they are, and that's that's why that's why I like talking with you because it's mm-hmm. it's like it's a, it's like a breath of fresh air. I can share a story that's relatable, even if it's in a different uh, different realm. It's still a similar process, um, and I think that's where the magic happens. That's the beauty of creation. It's it's universal in its own way, no matter what you're doing, and um, and that's that's why I I can sit here and talk with you, Brian, and and have such a great conversation you know we didn't even plan this part of the of the of the podcast but um this is why we can go off in a, in a tangent that's relatable to our topic because it kind of is what it is you know um yeah speaking of that uh i got a record that i'm working on with you um that yeah. i'm actually gonna have delivered to you this thursday or friday i told you the day i'm gonna have it to you um mm-hmm. you want to tell them a little bit about it please go for it man <clears throat> all right so um one of the things that i plan on doing um, on YouTube is um, using various other mediums to tell parts of the story or give some insight on it. And one of the things that actually has a strong role in, um, in the story between magic and dreams is music. And there's a lot of wisdom in it and they can tell stories um, within three minutes that normally it would take two hours, three hours to tell. Yeah. And um, it's, it's such a powerful thing. So I was like, you know what? I know people that do music, you know? And that goes um, in part with what I was saying earlier about if I know cool people who does great, I mean, who do great work, why not boost them and boost the book at the same time? Yes. You've mm-hmm. done something for me earlier and um, we love that piece, you know? Yes, um, yes. Nelson here created uh, anniversary song for me and my wife uh, a couple of years ago and that's like one of the most treasured things that we have now and wow. um, to turn around and have him create something for Between Magic and Dreams I figured it was a no-brainer one two he loves what he's doing you know yes. and that way I know I'm not gonna get garbage <laughs> that's always a good feeling for sure and mm-hmm. um and I want to play a role regardless of how small it might be and helping get your sound out there you know appreciate it man and um so the plan is to have some amazing art created for the background post the song and in the beginning this is brian d covington author of between magic and dreams this song so and so is created by nelson you can find him here is the song and then afterwards you get the same thing once again this is nelson you can find him here you know so on and so forth mm-hmm. because this is good but boosting other people while doing this feels better you know yes. so i want to have as many different music genres as i can um so far i've got about three um they're slowly trickling in i want to give people time to either read or hear the story so they can build off of what they feel from the book, you know? Mm, okay. And that's what's going to be put out there for other people to consume so they can have an idea of what to look forward to. What is the title of the song going to be, you think? <laughs> Dude, I have no idea. <laughs> um, you leaving that up to me or? You know what? What I could do, though, what I could do is listen to it and then pull my title from what I hear. So then, then this is what we'll do. I'll create the song. I won't title it. You will. Maybe Horizon's the Edge. Oh, <laughs> oh man, planning to see, boy. That's crazy. Yeah, man. There's a method I'm to the madness. That. I'm like, huh, huh, that's a tight title from the get-go. But yeah, lots of, lots of plans as far as I'm concerned. I have, oh, the artist who created my font um, yes. for, the, for the title, I've got her working on some images for the background of... Um, a reading that I'm going to have done by a gentleman I found on Instagram okay. who does amazing voice work, but he's not out there anywhere. I'm like, dude, how about this? <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of us out this. there, man. 
I mean, and this, it blows my mind how many skilled people, right? Not just some fly by nights, not just somebody who's like, hey, I'm gonna give this a shot. People with skill yeah. who aren't getting seen. And I thought that was just an artist thing. I thought it was just, you know, yeah. an artist thing because there's so many amazing artists who are starving. Whereas there's somebody who can throw a water balloon, I mean, a paint balloon at a canvas, call it, um, Un, like unsalted crackers or something. Yeah, and make thousands of dollars because they know people. That's what that's what it's all about, man. So it's 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 rough. And if I can get it out there, if I can get him out there, get these musicians out there, get these artists out there, I don't need anything. You know, I mean, it's I figure cross pollination as far as marketing works for me. So yeah, like, and of course, when when I eat, you eat. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, we could all eat. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. When I when I when I break bread, break bread, man. It's 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 something that I, I take serious, and I look at the people immediately who were there for me from the beginning. That's mm -hmm. the first people I look for. Um, you know, you and I have been talking off the air, and you know, there's a lot of people that I thought were ride or dies, that yeah. I, that uh, have really showing something different and and it's, it's really you never the point that i'm making here without bringing up names is not important um in terms of names um although you guys are curious but i'm not talking about <laughs> you're a little curious george get out of here what are you taking way to for? plant the seed buddy <laughs> <laughs> no listen it is what it is man um there'll be people in your life that you will never expect to do some things that just happen in this life in other words there could be somebody that's riding with you for 25, 30 plus years. Yeah. And you would you would, you never would expect this, this person, this chick, this dude, this, you know, they're there for me forever. Mm. Regardless, they're going to be there for me. You know what I mean? And when that time comes to step up to the plate, there'll be times where there's, you know, you, you're lining up to get on that boat to, to cross over. Do, it, do what it is you're supposed to do for this world. And they're not there. Yeah. And, and you got to be ready for that. Especially when things get real. Especially when things... Uh, listen, at the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for love. I'm a sucker for uh, happy endings. I love that shit, man. Uh, that's something that, you know, uh, I, I love, man. Uh, you know, that, that, there'll never not be a moment where I can wish for a happy ending, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, cause that's just my makeup. That's what I'm made up of, you know, and, and I always want a positive light at the end of the, uh, tunnel. The thing is, it is, but we may not see it in the beginning as that. So yeah. this is the, this is how I'm looking at it from a beautiful point of view. You know, no, I agree, man. I mean, I, I've always had this philosophy, especially when it came to, uh, relationships in general. Yeah. And that is, I would rather be the one that's like, uh, wrong about the situation, you know. Yeah. I, I would rather be the one wearing the egg on his face, and the reason being, in doing so, I know I did everything that I was supposed to do to make it go right. Right. So later, and this happens actually without fail. Um, later down the line, it just kind of comes around like, oh man, and you know what, I messed up. I'm sorry. Or man, it would have been cool yeah. if we could have did this or done that. I'm like, yeah but you chose this other route. So, yeah, you know, the thing is, once this happens, right, once somebody uh, betrays your trust or uh, takes you for granted or whatever, you make sure you keep going on like, your path because you can't let that ruin whatever future you may have had had you kept going. Correct. So having worn my heart on my sleeve like forever it's been a target i've been stabbed in it a lot it sucks right but when you find that one person that sees that you're wearing your heart on your sleeve and instead of stabbing you in it they throw themselves in front of the slings and arrows and protect you that's the shit yeah that's the sh that's the shit 100 percent, brother so i found that and then i'm seeing that same uh fervor to protect in my daughter and in my son. I'm like, see, I'm making other world changes. 
that rocks, you know, <laughs> that Absolutely. rocks. So it's, this is me being the change I want to see in the world. And yeah. hopefully it pans out. If, if it catches on, if it spreads, then good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, and I, yeah, it, 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 this is what it is, unfortunately. But, you know, in the midst of it, it's shitty. It sucks. It's like, damn it, man. Why? Mm. Oh, man. Why now, man? Things are just moving and, you know, life happens. This, this song was about to come out or, you know, whatever, you know, you're working on is, is, is moving. And, but there's always something that's throwing at something that you really care about uh, to really test the strength and, of it. And, um, and th there's going to be times along this journey that, that you're going to get knocked off the horse. It happens. It happens, yeah. man. Along the journey, it's just going to happen. Regardless, there's nothing we can do but, but keep our shield on, but, but keep yeah. our armor on. And when it hits, boom, we get hit, it hurts. Whatever, cool, fuck. Okay, I got to get through this. You know, it's not going to feel good. Yeah. They're life lessons, yeah. right? True, very true. And so, another thing is to, to heed uh warnings and keep yeah. your ear out for information there's going to be people who are going to want to you know give that's you true. advice and that's cool but the thing about it is you want to take what resonates with you yeah and leave the rest because just because they went through a similar situation doesn't mean that they're going through what you're going through true you know there's certain there's certain elements to every story that's going to be different even if they had gone through something similar so um I'm not saying that you need to throw out everybody else's advice, you know, it's not that, you know, just because they're older is not going to make any difference, but yeah. because they're older, they were brought up in a different time with different challenges. So, you know, bullying back in the eighties and nineties is nothing like now because they don't even have to be there. <laughs> they can just tweet it Thanks. or, you know, whatever. And then you go to school and people throw stuff at you because, you know, you've been hated on and they've seen it. So it's, it's just really weird stuff that we have to adapt to. But the information that you get from the elders is usable to a degree. So don't just toss it out, you know, out of pocket. Yeah, um, one, one, 100%, brother. Um, you know, I guess, I guess with that being said, man, it's, it's something that uh, – this, this is a, this, you know, when I, when I, when we were talking about doing this podcast, I, you know, I really, um, what did I say, like, or, or suggest, like, let's just keep a open mind. Let's just yeah, kind of talk how we mind. feel. Yeah. 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 Let it flow. That's it. And, and I'm happy because, you know, when sometimes when you, when you, when you control too much, you don't let what's supposed to happen, happen. Yeah. You stifle it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like that this conversation happened, that's hap it's happening the way it's happening because um, there's already gems I was supposed to hear. And it's just kind of ding, ding, going off in the head, <laughs> you know? And, and, and I, hope, I hope the same from my side when I'm saying something as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but that's, that's the beauty of a conversation, uh, the beauty of exchange, you know, and, and um, of energies. And so, um, man, listen, uh, where can people find you? What, what, okay. what, before we even get into that point, where, where, when, um, when is your, do you have an official release date for the uh, book number two? Can you give us that? Uh, nope. Okay. The only reason I that. say that, the only reason I say that is, uh, was, uh, I asked it the last time. Because, I asked it the last yeah, time. Because I, I'm, did I, I think I probably even gave you a, um, estimated drop date then. I can't remember. I don't think so. But I'll, I'll go back to it. Is, yeah, cool, cool. But what I realized is that anytime, you say like, oh, it's going to drop this time and anything happens between then and that time, That's it true. gets pushed back. And then you yeah. got fans looking for it at that date and they're like, oh, it's not out yet. Like, oh man, Happens. what are you doing? So I'd much rather just say, hey, I'm here. I'll be at this part of the process next. Once it's done, then I'll be bringing out more stuff. Yeah. I mean, I actually have a lot of uh, promotional material that I've created set. And I'm oh, like, wow. you know, I don't want to start teasing it until I've gotten it out of my hands and into the editor's hands. Fair. Because editors have deadlines. I do not. <laughs> that's facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. No, 100%. That's, that's real stuff, man. Um, okay, cool. So we'll, I'll roll with that. I'll take that one. Um, and regarding my song, I'm already saying it now. Uh, I'll have my end of the deal to you this Thursday or Friday. Finally, it's, it's coming. Um, and uh, 
I just really wanted to take my time with the piece and like I, like I do with everything, you know, and uh, musically. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that you'll love it as much as I loved creating it. So um, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm we're gonna sure have... I will. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cool, man. Um, and so, yeah, where, pe- where can people find you, man? Um, okay. So um, most of my time is spent on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Um, my post on Instagram, I switch between video and um, imagery because I love to create that kind of stuff. So it fits better there, although I'm going to experiment putting some on TikTok. But on TikTok, I also do mostly um, promotion of other people's stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so typically comic artists or novelists that I've come across that I find are amazing, I want to put out there so that, you know, okay. other people can find them too. So nice. um, it's it's been a pretty cool journey. And uh, I actually am on um, Facebook as well, but my account got hacked. So that kind of sucks. Mm, so okay. I just continue to post through Instagram though. I can forward my stories there. So that's what I do for now. Nice, man. Uh, yeah, but soon I will be on, I'm sorry, soon I will be on, um, on youtube okay but, uh, okay stay tuned for that yes yeah, and you have an official website as well yeah yes between magic and dreams.com and that baby is going to be getting revamped really soon that's in the progress too okay. lots of lines in the fire <laughs> okay yeah that's crazy man so yeah we got as you can see guys uh brian d coverton has a lot going on he's about to jump on youtube soon and uh and just kind of just take his stuff to the next level and and uh you know you see the grind any independent creator sees the sees what it is and you know, in order to be successful, like 100% successful, you got to put in that groundwork and the foundation needs to be strong. And I think that that is the beauty of the independent realm, uh, especially in the beginning, especially yeah. starting off in, in the, you know, because then you really get to understand the groundwork, what it truly takes to build a product. And then when you are at a point of success independently, where you can um, scale, then you're going to have all these conglomerates, all these bigger people coming at you. Hey, we see what you've done. We love the work that you're doing. And at this yeah. point in phase of your career, uh, you have a lot more say so than what you would have if you would just uh, give it to them in the beginning. So I think yeah. the, the angle that you're taking now is, is really wise. It's a longer route, but when you get there, brother, trust me, you're out of here. So just keep rocking and rolling, dude. It. Yeah, man. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I um, really appreciate it. Um, uh, also, yeah. I want to mention that sure. you can get the book in, um, in digital, audio book, hardcover, and paperback on nice. Amazon. And um, for now, um, I did have the book on um, blacksandsentertainment.com. Okay. But we sold out. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had to do a reorder. Congrats. Yeah, I had to do a reorder. And that's, that's actually awesome, man. I mean, that that made me feel really good. That felt like a step in the right direction. Rinse and repeat, brother. Keep it going. And that, for, again, independent work. Oh, that's, that's, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I really keep, keep you in my prayers, man. And, and you know, uh, I, I know there's a reason why we met. We met for a reason and, and many reasons, you know, of course. Um, yeah. But it's just interesting sometimes how, how the introduction happens, you know, it happens in, in the weirdest ways sometimes. And, um but when you when when you get past the weird the weird moment you're like damn that's crazy i'm happy i met you man so um yo thank you so much for being on the show man um i want you to be on here as much as you want you're always welcome to jump back on um cool yeah we've already been talking about it already um about mm-hmm. potential future uh just you know talks man let's just let's just do what we do and um before we go um i do want to mention uh I still like this whole quote of the day thing. I think it's a really nice uh, breath of fresh air. And I think it just really aligns with what we've been talking about this whole time. Um, And uh, quote of the day today says, um, if a person has never made a mistake, they've never tried anything new. And this was, I'll say it again. If a person has never made a mistake, they've never tried anything new. So this was by Albert Einstein. Um, that's powerful. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that, man? I agree, man. Because uh, in order to try something, you're never going to get it right the first time, every 100. time. 100%. You know? So it's worth it to try new things just so you can make those mistakes and get stronger for, for it. So. I'm, I'm a victim of it, and I'm sure you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
this journey alone, yeah. <laughs> this book thing alone is like, yeah, it's rock with mistakes, but I figured all this stuff out. Crazy. Guys, if this was your first time tuning in, do me a favor and take the time right now to subscribe to my channel. This is the Q Box Podcast or AKA uh, um, the Nelson Experience. And um, we just want to, you know, I'm going to have a bunch of people on here, guys from all walks of life, like my man, Brian D. Covington. We're just going to keep pushing it out. I'm definitely going to have him here on here again because, uh, you know, we just have some great conversations that really needs to have a record button always present. And so I, I, think, I think we should really just keep it going. And um, we can learn a lot from, from each other. And, and that's, that's what's great about this experience. But anyway, guys, um, you know, press that notification bell, press that subscribe button. That way you can be notified every single time I got a new podcast a new anything that's on, on, on the, you know, fresh off the press. And, uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, um, do me a favor and subscribe to my main channel. Uh, it's called Nelson. So N E L S O N N. I have two N's at the end. Um, and, and this channel guys, I'm d diving deep into my life, my world, um, you know, where I'm living in the world, being, being in Germany, uh, as an American, this and what my life experiences have been with that. So guys, definitely tune into that as well. Uh, that way you can kind of just kind of dive into my background. And that channel, I'm doing music creations. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing uh, covers. I'm doing, you know, creations from scratch um, and, and mukbangs. You know, um, sometimes I'll just jump on and, you know, show you a lifestyle food that's in this world that I'm living in and just, and I'll just eat it in front of you. So, um, definitely check it out. And, and, um, even though it's so funny cause I don't like eating in front of people, but I want to do it for some reason. I think, uh, people really like to see other people eat as weird as it sounds. It's just, it just really gets your curious George is going, you know? Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, man, definitely check it out. It's definitely a channel, um, full of life and it's starting to grow a lot and then definitely want to be a part of that growth. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll oh. see you on the next one. Yeah, one go ahead, Yeah, yeah, go ahead, tell me. I, I want the world to know, all right, and yourself okay. included. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of how cool I am, I'm only reflecting your shine. Oh, thank you, brother. I really appreciate that, man. So hey. <laughs> thank you, my man, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Peace.